the 30th of January, 1933. Adolf Hitler is appointed Chancellor of Germany, bringing an end to German democracy. Guided by racist and authoritarian ideas, the Nazis abolish basic freedoms and seek to create a community which would unite all social classes and regions of Germany behind one Führer. The Third Reich quickly becomes a police state, where individuals are subject to arbitrary arrest and imprisonment. The Nazis effectively use propaganda to win the support of millions of Germans to facilitate persecution, war, and ultimately genocide. However, while most of the population remains silent or reluctantly follows the regime to avoid persecution or out of fear for their safety and that of their families, there are many individuals who despise the Nazis and risk their lives to resist or even help those targeted by the regime. One of them is the brother of Hermann Göring, one of the most prominent Nazi leaders and Adolf Hitler's right-hand man. His name is Albert Göring. Albert Gunther Göring was born on the 9th of March, 1895, in Friedenau, then part of the German Empire. He was the fifth child of Franziska and Heinrich Ernst Göring. His mother came from a respected Bavarian farming family, and his father came from northwest Germany and a long line of Prussian statesmen and bureaucrats. Before Albert's birth, Heinrich himself served as the Imperial Commissioner of German Southwest Africa and the German Consul General to Haiti. The Göring family lived with their children's aristocratic godfather of Jewish heritage, Hermann Eppenstein Ritter von Mautenberg, in his Feldenstein and Mautendorf castles. Eppenstein was a prominent physician and acted as a surrogate father to the children, as Heinrich Göring was often absent from the family home. Eppenstein began an affair with Franziska Göring about a year before Albert's birth. A strong physical resemblance between Eppenstein and Albert Göring led many to believe that they were father and son, which would mean that Albert Göring was Jewish. However, Franziska Göring had accompanied her husband to his post in Haiti and lived there with him between March 1893 and mid-1894, which makes this extremely unlikely. Albert could hardly have been more different from his elder brother. He was brown-eyed, tall, slim, modest, studious, well-behaved, played the piano, and was popular with women. On the other hand, Hermann was blue-eyed, fat, bombastic, militaristic, addicted to morphine, liked crowds and company, and most of all, he was a fanatical anti-Semite. The First World War began on the 28th of July, 1914. On the 2nd of August of the same year, Albert Göring signed up to the 6th Bavarian Reserve Division as a communications engineer. Albert fought in the trenches on the Western Front, and among other things had to repair communications cables that had been destroyed under fire. These missions were so dangerous that he spent much of the war wounded in military hospitals. Albert was injured during the First Battle of Ypres on the 14th of November, 1914, and afterward in July 1918, he ended up with a bullet wound to the abdomen, received his discharge papers, and returned to Munich. In contrast, Hermann distinguished himself as a fighter ace, and by the end of the war, he was a national celebrity. In 1921, while still a student at Munich Technical University, Albert married 21-year-old Maria von Umon, but divorced her two years later. On the 10th of September 1923, he married Erna von Miltner, a 37-year-old titled woman, and nine years his senior. While Hermann rose up the ranks of the Nazi high command, Albert and Erna moved in 1927 to Vienna to work as a sales representative. Adolf Hitler and the Nazi party came into power in January 1933. Soon after the resumption of power, Nazi leaders began to make good on their pledge to persecute German Jews. During the first six years of Hitler's dictatorship from 1933 until the outbreak of war in 1939, Jews felt the effects of more than 400 decrees and regulations that restricted all aspects of their public and private lives. Many of those laws were national ones that had been issued by the German administration and affected all Jews. But state, regional, and municipal officials on their own initiative also promulgated a barrage of exclusionary decrees in their own communities. Thus, hundreds of individuals in all levels of government throughout the country were involved in the persecution of Jews as they conceived, discussed, drafted, adopted, enforced and supported anti-Jewish legislation. No corner of Germany was left untouched. Nazi propaganda played an integral role in advancing the persecution and ultimately the destruction of Europe's Jews. It created an atmosphere tolerant of violence against Jews, and also encouraged passivity and acceptance of the impending measures against them, as these appear to depict the Nazi government as stepping in and restoring order. 
By early 1939, only about 16% of the Jewish breadwinners had steady employment of any kind. While in January 1933, some 522,000 Jews by religious definition lived in Germany, approximately 304,000 of them emigrated during the first six years of the Nazi dictatorship. Albert became more and more concerned for both his country and the Jews in Europe. He hated the Nazis and had said early on that Hitler would bring nothing but war and destruction. He did not join the Nazi party and saw the persecution of Jews and the disabled for exactly the kind of evil it was. On the 23rd of March 1935, two years after Hermann and the Nazi party seized power in Germany, Albert applied for Austrian citizenship. In the years that followed, he would openly oppose the Nazi rule and confront injustice, using his privileged position as brother to the deputy Führer, as in September 1939, Hitler designated Hermann Goering as his successor and deputy in all his offices. The first time Albert Goering helped a victim of the Nazi regime was due to a request from his brother, Hermann Goering. Towards the end of 1937, Emmy Goering, Hermann's wife and former actress, begged him to save her friend, the film star, Henny Porton, and Hermann, unable to publicly compromise his Nazi principles, called Albert in Vienna to see if he could help. Porton's career and livelihood had come under threat in Germany when she refused to divorce her Jewish husband. At the time, Albert was working in Vienna as the technical director of Austria's largest film company, Tobis Sascha Filmindustrie AG. Albert helped Henny by arranging a contract for her at Tobis Sasha. Albert soon realized that he possessed the greatest weapon he could use against the Nazi regime, his name, and that his Nazi brother could be the ticket to saving innocent people. In the spring of 1938, Adolf Hitler annexed the federal state of Austria into the German Reich. The Anschluss, as it became known, took place over three days between the 11th and 13th of March, 1938. During and after the chaos of the Anschluss, Albert intervened on behalf of Oskar Pilzer, his Jewish boss at Tobis Sascha. Goering then helped Pilzer and his family escape from Germany. He is reported to have done the same for many other German dissidents. Ernst Neubach, a Jewish film director who in 1938 fled to France and owed a great deal to Albert Goering, described an episode in Vienna shortly after the Nazis took over Austria. When Nazis raided a paint shop, they could not find the owner and collared his 75-year-old mother instead. They hung a sign around her neck that read, I am a dirty Jew, and forced her to sit in the shop's window. When Goering happened upon the scene, he pushed his way through the jeering onlookers, removed the sign from the humiliated woman, and led her away from the crowd. When a few lower-ranking members of the SS blocked his way, he showed them his identification and they let him go. On a different occasion, Hermann Goering saw a line of Jewish women being publicly humiliated by SS officers, who were forcing them to scrub the street on their hands and knees. Albert took off his jacket, took a scrubbing brush from one of the women, and knelt down to take her place. The SS hauled him to his feet and asked him for his papers. When he showed him the papers, that was the end of that scene. The SS officers, not wanting to have to explain to Hermann why his brother was humiliated or get into a lengthy public debate on the street about it, quietly dismissed the Jewish women. On the 15th of March, 1939, in violation of the Munich Agreement, Nazi Germany invaded the occupied Czech provinces of Bohemia and Moravia. Adolf Hitler himself arrived in Prague and on the 16th of March, 1939, by a proclamation from Prague Castle, established the Protectorate of Bohemia and Moravia. More than 118,000 Jews living in the Protectorate found themselves under Nazi domination. Albert Goering went to the Protectorate of Bohemia and Moravia, where he was made export director at the Skoda Works. Skoda, one of the largest arms manufacturers in Europe at the time, was incorporated into the Reichswerke Hermann Goering, a Nazi industrial conglomerate which by the end of 1941 became the largest company in Europe and probably in the whole world, with a capital of 2.5 billion Reichsmarks and about half a million workers. At times, Hermann Goering withdrew cash from this conglomerate for his personal expenses. But it was not his brother's influence that got Albert his high-ranking position. He had developed a reputation, which led to the plant's management to offer him the job. One manager said, Albert Goering always spoke out against Nazism. He never used, as far as I know, the Nazi greeting. Nor did he have Hitler's picture in his study, even though that was mandatory. At Skoda Works, Albert Goering encouraged minor acts of sabotage, had contact with the Czech resistance, and in many cases, he forged his brother's signature to sign travel documents for dissidents to flee. Later, in Prague, 
Albert used a letterhead, with the name Göring printed on it, to write a letter to the camp commandant in Dachau, in which he demanded the release of Josef Scharwat, a doctor and resistance fighter. The commandant had two men named Scharwat in the camp, and to be on the safe side, he released them both. Hearing reports of the atrocities taking place at concentration camps, Albert confronted his brother, who brushed the claims aside. So, Albert made his most audacious move of all, driving a convoy of trucks to the Theresienstadt ghetto. According to Jacques Bembassa, the stepson of Albert's best friend, the plan was successfully executed. He came to the commandant of the camp and said, I am Albert Goering, Skoda Works, I need workers. The head of the Theresienstadt ghetto agreed, because it was Albert Goering. He filled up the trucks with these workers, took them into the woods, and let them out. In 1939, Albert divorced Erna von Miltner, his sickly wife of 16 years, even though at the time she was on her deathbed dying of lung cancer. He then began a relationship with a former Czech beauty queen, Mila Glazarova. They married in Salzburg on the 23rd of June, 1942, and had a baby daughter, Elisabeth Göring. By the summer of 1944, Albert had become a marked man, and his actions were monitored and recorded by the local Gestapo in Prague. In August 1944, a wire was sent to Heinrich Himmler by the General of Police in Prague, SS Obergruppenführer Karl Hermann Frank, requesting permission to seize Albert for interrogation. Frank's message read, Mr. Albert Goering, who in my opinion is a defeatist of the worst sort, arrived in Prague from Budapest yesterday, bringing news of atrocities. Because he entertains relationships with unreliable Czech industrialists, I consider his unrestricted mobility to be dangerous and therefore request permission to transfer him to the Reich Security Head Office in Berlin for interrogation and clarification of serious suspicions. Hermann Goering had to ask Himmler personally to smooth over the entire matter, and in October 1944, Albert was cleared of all charges and then went to Austria to reunite with his wife and daughter. When the two brothers met for the last time, in an American detention center in May 1945, Hermann told Albert, You will soon be free. Take care of my wife and my child. Hermann Goering was then tried at the Nuremberg trials, and the military tribunal sentenced him to death by hanging. However, he committed suicide by ingesting cyanide hours before the sentence was to be carried out. Albert Goering was arrested by the Czechs, and he was again released when the full extent of his activities became known, and his release was ordered on the 14th of March, 1947. The next month, he was reunited with his family in Austria. Having known about his infidelities, his Czech wife Mila divorced him and migrated to Lima in Peru with their daughter Elizabeth. Despite being a highly qualified engineer, he was unable to find work in post-war Germany, as he could not shake the scar that his brother had brought to the Goering name. He spent the remainder of his years in Munich with his former housekeeper, Brunhilde Seiwaldstetter, living on a pension from the government. He knew that if he remarried, on his death, the pension payments would be transferred to his new wife. As a sign of gratitude, he married his housekeeper in 1966, so she would receive his pension. One week later, on the 20th of December, 1966, 71-year-old Albert Goering died of pancreatic cancer. There were many tears shed for Albert Goering. Thanks for watching the World History Channel. Be sure to like and subscribe, and click the bell notification icon so you don't miss our next episodes. We thank you, and we'll see you next time on the channel.